But we see almost in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 52, 7, again, says, How beautiful are the, upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. That's the good news, right? There's, there's peace, there's prosperity. Your God reigns. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 6. The Bible says, The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Verse 9, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into thy high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. It's the same message. And even notice here, he's saying, You know, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. Lift up, afraid. And would to God we could have people who would not be afraid to preach the gospel. And I thank God we have a whole church full of people here that are not afraid to preach the gospel. And we need more people to not be afraid to preach the gospel. We need a lot more people because that is one of the number one things that prevents believers from preaching the gospel is fear it's fear i know hey I'll, I'll be the first to admit i was afraid i was afraid before i started soul winning i was afraid to even go out and be a silent partner and then after i was a silent partner i was afraid to try to open up my mouth and and, and preach the gospel i was afraid it's not right we shouldn't be afraid. We have no reason to sin. I didn't fear the Lord more than I was fearing man or fearing the unknown. I mean, the Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murderers and torturers and whoremongers and all dyers shall have their, their part in the lake which burn the fire and brimstone, which is second death. We use that list of sins. Usually we point out all liars to people who are unsaved saying, hey, this is bad enough to send you to hell. But what's the first part? But the fearful, right? But the fearful. And especially as a believer, you have no reason to be fearful. You have no reason to be fearful, no good reason. And God commands you not to be fearful. You only fear the Lord. And if you fear the Lord, you're going to keep his commandments. And he's commanding you to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. See how that works? Nice and simple, right? Nonetheless, I was still afraid. And nonetheless, people today are still afraid. We have to overcome that fear, though, and understand and trust in God. And hey, you're bringing good tidings. See, people fear because you're worried about what other people are going to think of you and get mad at you, whatever. But you're thinking about it all wrong. You got to think about it this way. You're bringing a good message. Don't worry if someone's going to get mad. I mean, think about it. If you had any other good news to tell anyone, do you ever worry about how they're going to respond to a good message? I mean, think about that. If you, if you have good news, maybe, it, maybe a new married young couple just finds out they're pregnant. We've got good news. Hey, we're going to have a baby. You're not worried about being afraid, or you shouldn't be, of like what people are going to say to you when you've got a good message. Or, hey, uh, you know, you've been in need. I'm going to give you a thousand bucks to help you out. Right? You're going to tell them. You're not going to be afraid. Well, what are they going to say? Are they going to be mad if I, t if I tell them I've got this great gift for them? Well, you know what? The message of salvation is good news. Which, by the way, we ought to preach it as such, too, right? I, I don't like the, the, you know, the, the Ray Comfort style. The bad news, right? That he brings bad news. You got to repent of all your sins, right? Well, okay. Guess I ain't going to make it then. And that's how he treats people too. And people are just like, well, I can't do that. He just basically damns them then. Okay, well, yeah, you're not going to make it then. He spends half of his time, to, or more than wicked, how wicked, how wicked, how wicked you are. It's like, Dude, is there any good news to this at all? We need to preach the good news. Obviously, people need to understand they're a sinner and they need a savior. Uh, obviously, right? Of course, of course, we believe that and we have to teach that and preach that. But the majority of the time we ought to be spending on the good news. The bad news is that you're a sinner. But you know what? The gospel is the good news. The gospel is that Christ paid your way. The gospel is that, hey, the good news is that it lasts forever. 
The good news is that now of your works. The good news is bought and paid for. The good news is all you have to do is believe. Amen. Amen. That's the good news. And we need to be preaching that good news. So why do you have to be afraid? That's good news. I mean, if people reject good news, okay, whatever. Don't let that get to you. No reason to fear. Um, 